check, 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 mic, check, mic, check, one, two, one, two. Let's see a few things going on right quick. Be straight. I need this a little right quick. One sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. I do, I do. Jump, 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 shuffle, repeat. One. And prefaces. I should have did all this before I went. <laughs> uh, no crossfade. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. What up, what up, what up? Yo, yo, we live. All right, I see the avatar jumping, so that means we got some action. Peace to y'all family. How y'all doing, man? Brother Lawrence 228. It's the top of the morning, man. I'm trying to uh, push down some of these doughs. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? And <clears throat> you know it's been a uh, blessed morning, man. Had to, you know, correct my son this morning on the way to school. You know what I'm saying? You know that that, that fatherly thing. You know, you just got, got you in the mood, some kind of <laughs> up up. You know, usually I drop him off, I come back, and you know, so I get on to some some design, some of my editing work. You know, for my biz, but you know, I think, I think so. When I drop them off and get back, man, I, I, I want to try to uh, get on that in my seat. You know what I'm talking about? And you know, yep, I don't think it was yesterday. We went live yesterday. Uh, if it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before that. Last bit, how about that? Uh, we, I try to present. Uh, when I was D, I was DJing. That's where I was on a reservation at that point. You know, it was an event going on, and we had some of the, you know, what I'm saying the uh, quote unquote Native Americans uh, doing their thing. I was like, hold up, you know, let me let me go check this out. And you know, when I was trying to uh, play it, it didn't kind of skip you, man. So I hope, I hope. Because I'm on a, uh, another computer that, you know, and I'm, I'm tethered in that that shouldn't happen. Everything should be kind of clear. Should be clear. Right? And uh, no, ain't nothing wrong with that. That was me doing that. So, excuse the silliness, but damn me. So, uh, what we're going to get into, man, for. Uh, you know the title we were talking about the pre clothes coaches that were here before um you know what we learn in school right we we, we learn that everybody come out of africa and migrated to the americas via the Bering strait okay so um, this pre Clovis, um, I don't know what to call it. One of like more than one episode, or two uh, series. How about that? You know what I'm talking about? We're gonna, we're gonna, uh, this little series of pre Clovis is, is, is going to demonstrate, um, that they, is two things. It's gonna demonstrate that this theory don't know, or the people that de- believe in this theory don't have a clue what's going on. And I'm quite sure they have uh their substantial evidence to prove woo do woo do woo. You know what I'm saying? We got bones over here, we got this over here, all the fact this right here. We we you know we migrated. Bearing straight. All right, 
And we had evidence of the contract. So, you know, it's, it's, it's battle of the sources, I guess, you know, at the end of the day. But, uh, you know, what's what's the, the purpose? Yeah, we, we, we want to open your minds. We don't have to necessarily just give you another record of the source, even though I do think only science can be science in a sense, but when science speaks, you know what I'm saying, we're gonna hear about. And, and and lately, and still to this day, science says in the schools that you migrated out of Africa through the Bering Strait, got here in the Americas. Okay. Big fan. You know, uh so it could be like um uh, it could be that um, they just haven't updated their um, updated their archives, you know. And we are gonna get onto some of the archaeology, you know. I'm starting to like this field, man. You know, I kind of had a feel for it when I was in college, but you know, at USM, but. You know, it just didn't translate right after the, to the real world. You know what I'm saying? Had real problems, got had, you know what I'm saying? Real bills to be dealing with. <laughs> I was not thinking about playing in no dirt or saw the relevance or how important it is when I'm trying to understand and wrap my head around not only who's who, but who I am right now. And what my family had to do with this story, you know what I'm saying? So history is important. If you have a family reunion, and okay, fellowship is good. Fellowship is always good, but you do do you have a historian, a family historian, to come in there and and show you why y'all are related and who do y'all come from? Who who? Who were the ancestors, you know what I'm saying, who, who paved the way for you? You know what I'm saying? Do you, do you, um, I hope y'all had that, you know what I'm saying? You know, if not, you got to be the one. You got to be the one to take action, take the initiative to, you know, gather that information and this this is not a one day thing you know what i'm saying and, and true i remember when i first got in man that's all i was doing hours and hours just you know tuned in with the ancestors you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm saying it was a great thing i felt like i was doing my my family a great great you know what i'm saying service that you know, to them, like, we, we, we're, you know, this is the new, new, you know what I'm saying? This is the new information that's coming in, you know, on top, building on top, you know, what the ancestors, ancestors already put down, what we was able to um, keep and be able to pass down. But yeah, man, talk to you, talk to grandma. Talk to talk to grandma before. You know what I'm saying? It's life, man. And you know, you're here and you and you go. So uh talk to you, talk to your mom, talk to your grandma, talk to your, your, your pops, you know, talk to your family, you know what I'm saying? When you're doing your genealogy, you you you, you, you know, you somewhat know, but when you don't sit down, you know what I'm saying. 15, 30 minute conversations about how things were back then and who, you know what I'm saying? Like, go into that. You know, keep notes. You know, and, you know, hey, if, they, if, they, if you want to record them, uh, you know, just let them know, you know, I got a little recorder, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I just want to 
you know, hear your, you know, not necessarily your testimony, but, you know, hey, you know, talk about how I was back then, you know. Uh, it's nothing greater than that, you know what I'm saying? That, that it, It'll override, it trumps what you hear from anybody else. In my opinion, it's kind of like when you have a last name, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, take honor in that, you know, especially when you got off, like, you know, your cousin, your cousin down the street, <laughs> your auntie uh, uh, across the street. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how I was in our hood, man. You know, our village, you know what I'm saying? Our tribe. No, I'm talking about it was one end you get your hair whooped, and on the other end you get your hair whooped. <laughs> See y'all with that stay ready. <laughs> oh man. Um I love it though, but um it, it I think that's how it's supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Not that it was it, you just run into people, man. If you know we the same people, you just had them run in over stupid stuff, right? Because people do this stupid stuff, you know what I'm saying? And most of the time, it, it deserves checking. And when you get checked, it's like, shit, man, I ain't no pussy. Pow! You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I ain't trying to break that. Shit, but hey, you know what I'm saying? That what, that's what it is in, in those type of... Uh, environments people like that <laughs> but nevertheless man well i appreciate you tuning in man i do before i get into the actual uh pre-covis sources which i'm gonna drop the source in just a second as i always do and uh for you to check out man you know what i'm saying don't take my word for it read the article read it you know what i'm saying do what you gotta do do what you gotta do so, uh, you know what I'm saying? To break down your door, if it don't make sense, you already know how I'm rocking with my lineage is over this way. So, you know, that's pretty much uh, all I, you know, that's how I give it up. But this this right here is, is it's not necessarily off subject, but it's dealing with how information can uh can be used as a weapon really <laughs> it can be, it, it can it, it ain't necessarily about to be a weapon but it could be used to manipulate or to to run the world you know what i'm saying to create a narrative to you know you know but we already know you know the colonization how that went down so you know those who empower tell a story you know so uh, right now we already know whose story has been told and we know who it came from you know and, and we know what we went to school and what we learned and these people still screaming after they didn't got out of school they screaming it. I ain't gonna lie you know I went to USM and I was screaming it too you know join different organizations and you know hey they screaming it too. Everybody's screaming. So it's like, do do we need to stop? Or do we need to, you know, switch it up to where uh you know we need to switch our swag up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Gotta switch it up there now and then. But uh without further ado, man, before we get into that, I'm gonna uh go ahead and drop uh a new song to this channel, you know, I'm always rocking with my own Rick Bang, who come up with some more fire, you know what I'm saying, and I'm um, about to check it out, man, it's called Freedom, let me know what y'all think, man, you know, and uh, you, you go check him out on his chat, you know, and on his YouTube. Almost free, right? You can't be counterfeit.
to Rick Bain, man. Shout out Tito Lopez. Shout out Ronda Tamers. Davis. They really did this song, man. Shout out to y'all, man. And uh, let's keep going. Freedom. 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 It appears after 400 years that we ain't free yet And if we need the march then tell me where I need to be at The system got a chained up in the cage and we can't see that Reparation was never paid, we probably never see that They make it hard to be black, we need to take our streets back We tired of screaming peace and they can't tell me where the peace at I speak facts, so spread the word that it's time If they don't stop with the line, we gon' have to tear down for some freedom That's right, that's right Freedom, freedom, bang, bang. Freedom, 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 freedom. He also be singing too. You know, so if y'all y'all down to collaborate. I want the world to know that we can grow if we got focus. I'm bringing life together instead of living life hopeless. If we can open up the love and get rid of all the hurt, and remember that we all going to the same dirt and put the work in for black people. If Black Lives Matter, instead of sending out them bullets that make black lives scatter, if we united in one cause, that we can stand for something bigger. I'm trying to make a change instead of being another new. We want freedom. Watch Captain in Florida. Freedom. 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 Fre
So uh, we're gonna go ahead and show this, and we get into pre close. <laughs> That's a good mic, huh? What we call our grand entry. The grand entry. The uh, I want everybody that's watching to really pay attention. G, what up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So that was the first part. I got another another clip. Uh, let me see another clip. Uh, let's see where they go. Sorry. So this is the second clip when you get to getting into the history. Of what's going on you know what i'm saying of the native american all right so let's check them out a little brief history of this style of dance well the dance i guess oh uh, yo this was back man it's like eight years it's like 2010 2009 2009 2010 something like that <laughs> It's 2021, 2013, something like that. 12, 13 era, something like that. Yeah. What were you doing back then? I was, I was kicking it with the Native Americans. <laughs> no, but yeah. No. This style of dance, I know, I know uh, oh, yeah. a lot of you have studied or read about Indians, tribes, and all this. No, this no, you understand about the tribe and all that. You know what I'm saying? This style of dance came from up around Montana, around the plains north. The plains north. This is how they be dancing up north, the plain Indians. You know what I'm saying? South all through that area. And most of you already know, if not, most Indian tribes were nomadic. Followed the most Indian tribes were nomadic. So saying that they were, uh, these dancers here would come in, they would lead to the following the people because they were aware that the tribes went. They may be there for, they may be there for a month, they may be there for a few months, as long as the buffalo or whatever they were following was there. So these guys would come in and everywhere that these tribes went, they were, uh, they had to have a place to dance. So back then, it would be like prairie grass and stuff, and they'd just be swinging and swaying. And then these guys would come in and dance it down to where it looks like this, just so that their whole tribe and their people would have a place to dance in these categories. So uh, without saying any more, I want to introduce these guys to you. I got Blake. Y'all can clap. And Sarai McGee. We talked about. 
I can clap. Let me stop. I got my phone. I think we were uh, in at more Alabama, so this may be like the Porch Creek Indians. May, uh, I could be wrong. <laughs> And that's in Atmore, Alabama. Let me make sure that me got Alabama. Make sure I quick, 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 yeah. Atmore, Alabama. I'm sorry. I'm at the Indian Reservation in Atmore. Yeah, the porch brand. Yup, 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 yup. There we go. So. Get out there, do the Josephine Johnny on their ass and bust them down. <laughs> yeah, man, like, ain't nobody, man. But I guess that's how they dance. So, the plane, that's how the planes and these dance. You know how we gonna come through that thing. <laughs> Tell the feet, Jack, Law, and Merce got the whole by and put. I'm buzzing. That's the first dance. I'm buzzing now. Any party. Any party going on. I'm Josephine Jack. Josephine Jack, Law, and Merce. I am so sorry. Um, yeah, man, it's a great day. Beautiful day. You know, even with the overcast. No one time out. So, yeah, man, we're talking about pre-Clovis, right? And we're going to get into, you know, I don't really like showing it. We can, 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 we can. Uh, that's how. We, that's what we go. We go. We go call that. <laughs> we go call motherfucker that goes that Wikipedia. We go call. You got that? Wiki, 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 wiki. <laughs> how about that? Okay. Well, let me shut my screen. Oh. Share my screen. Share my screen. Share my screen. Share my screen. <laughs> Hey. All right, so uh yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So we're gonna go to wicked 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 wicked. Just a quick wicked 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 wicked. We can zoom in on that a little bit. Almost okay. We can make it like that. We can make it like that. Meadow Croft Rock Shelter. Okay, Metacroft Rock Shelter is an archaeological site located near Vela in Jefferson Township, Washington County, Pennsylvania, United States. Okay, now we show one site down in Georgia, this one right here in Pennsylvania, and, and we got we got a few more coming up, right? And you, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna bust that close it up. You know what I'm saying? 
the site is a rock shelter in the bluff overlooking Cross Creek, a tributary uh, of the Ohio River. and contains evidence that the area may have been continually inhabited for more than 19,000 years. If accurately dated, the site will be the earliest known evidence of human presence and the longest sequence of continuous human occupation in the what they want to call the new world. All right, the Americas. All right, the old, the real old world. See, you know, like he's throwing these hands out there. All right, so, uh, so yeah. You know, you got that. We don't need all that. Well, it's outside of Pittsburgh, right? So I'm gonna go to another little joint, right? We we gonna get archaeology, archaeology.org. All right, let me go ahead and go ahead. I should have should have been had these up in there. Boom, and I'm going to get. I don't too before we get to that one. Yeah. All right, so uh <laughs> that looks so ragged as all that little ragged as fuck. <laughs> okay. Let me see if I can zoom, 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 zoom. Okay. They digging y'all. Got a desk and everything set up. They built some stairs around that. We're trying to get down, up, and back up for sure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Safely. So uh this is a real short one. You know, they keep it kind of short with this archaeology uh website. But uh, you know, hey, we trying to get in, get out. You know what I'm saying? In court, what, what, what uh by nipple someone under to you. It's October 2014. Sorry about that, nigga. If you uh nickel, Nikel, Nikal. <laughs> but it it's not like nickel. Nickel. Swam swam swamming Nathan. Nickel swimming Nathan. That's what it is. Or Michael. Michael swimming Nathan. Nickel swimming Nathan. All right, there we go. So according to the Mercyhurst, Mercyhurst University archaeologist Jim uh, Dovazio met a Croft Rock shelter where he began working in mid-1970s. Okay, he holds the distinction of being the longest occupied site in America. People began camping there um, episod episodically, episodically, episodically. I'm only talking about episode, but I ain't never had it with this. Uh, but episodically, as early as 16,000 years ago, and continued visiting the shelter until the 13th century AD. Advisio, Advisio terms it, Advisio terms it a late Pleistocene holiday in, adding it had never fled. It's high and dry. Uh, the overhang prehistorically was fairly large and it well ventilated several feet below the shelters opening increased cross creek where those setting up camp could easily have access to fresh water the roof collapsed 13 to 14 thousand years ago trapped beneath the breath the material uncovered in excavation vazio say roughly 700 species of stone like uh, man they multiplying in that thing some of them Made from jasper, chert, you know, from the deposits of the site. Fit the complete tools are large enough fragments to be recognizable implements, you know. Boo, boo, boo. You know, I mean, hey, this, the, the link is in the description as well. If you want to continue your search on that, it's really uh, just to back up with the, that there were uh, civilization before. Pre clothes, I don't know why you want to start there. You know, it ain't like we're talking about homo sapien sapien and homo sapien. Uh, maybe we're just talking about homo sapien sapien. You know what I'm saying? All right, so uh, that's in there. 
But yeah, man, and, and, and you know, the, the, the second one, let's see if we can, uh, okay, we're saying the first American. This is by Steve Moyer. Humanities, March, April 14, everything, 2014, March, April, you know. Uh, Humanities, the magazine of the National Endowment for the Humanities. Okay. We'll be thinking know about the arrival of the Homo sapiens on this continent. All right. So, um, He's speaking in first person. So when you say I, oh, that ain't first person, is it? A third person. When you say I, but he's talking about himself. Okay. Steve Moore. In 1970, college students in archaeology, such as myself, learned that the first human began to arrive in North America, had come over a land bridge from Asia and Siberia, approximately 13,000, 13, 5, 13, 500 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that what y'all teach in school? Ain't that what we learn in school? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're talking about the 1970s. That, since the 1970s, that's, <laughs> to date, y'all been kicking this. Humans began to arrive in the North America around this date. These people, the first North Americans, were known collectively as the Clovis people. This is who, this is who the Native Americans say they descend from. And probably, you're probably wondering, I already get my voice like this. The journey was made possible according to the archaeology far and wide by a corridor that opened up between giant ice sheets covering what is now Alaska and Alberta. Those did the Clovis people, uh, <laughs> thus did the Clovis people not move down through the North American continent, right? They're, they're giving you your plane. Now, Nick Minaj, the, the, the Clovis people might do move down through the North American continent, carrying, <laughs> carrying the distinctive tools, the various sites in the plain states in the Southwest, and then moving eastward and did this very quickly okay significant evidence close catch uh, had been discovered in new mexico hmm is that so in 1908 a rancher riding along the arroyo on his property near Folsom noticed that uh what looked like large bone embedded in an embarkment it turned out to be from the gigantic ice age bison right uh and Bison, we want to them put it back up in that thing, man. You know what I'm saying? So that was the um, uh, one jigma set. A jigma set. That means I'll be back when I be back. Um, uh, boom, 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 boom. I said, I heard something about bison. Asian bison, bison, things, boom, boom, boom. Hmm. They turn out to be a bison from the late Pleistocene megafauna, uh, fauna, megafauna, uh, such as mammoths, and they had cut marks that had clearly been made by humans. South of there in Blackwater Draw, uh, elegant fashion, spear points. Some are up, some about the size of the palm of your hand, turned up in the 1930s. The spear points had fluting and were at fluting and were large enough to fail ice age, fail ice age animals. Hmm. Clovis first, as it was called, was one of the accepted explanations. What? Clovis first, as it was called, was the one and only. We ain't taking no more theories. It's a theory now. It's not a fact anymore. So you can't say you're going by facts. You 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 you're saying scientific theory based off of facts. But this this, this ain't no scientific theory. This ain't no scientific fact. Because it's scientifically 
ain't sound. We in, we about to give you some of that drop right here. Clover Spurs, as it was called, was the one and only accepted explanation of initial human arrival and subsequent, subsequent uh, expansion throughout North and South America, right? Ain't that right? Ain't that right? Ain't, ain't that what they bang? Native Americans going to bang this. And the Pan-Africans going to bang this. I see why, you know what I'm saying? It's easy for them to work together. Hell, we all need to work together. We just want our land back. And we're going to show how your information is not really what you think it is. You know what I'm saying? So, again, Clovis first, as it was called, was the one and only accepted explanation of initial human arrival and subsequent expansion throughout North and South America. To be taken seriously, any artifact or human culture had to be dated after those found in Clovis. Okay. I remember learning all this in introductory archaeology at the College of Southeastern Pennsylvania. Little did I or my professors know that a couple of hundred miles away at a place called Metacroft, not far from Pittsburgh, an archaeological deal led by James McVazio was finding evidence that would cast the promise promise of Clovis man completely in doubt and produce major challenges for existing theories. 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 That means that shit could be updated. It ain't a fact. You know what I'm saying? You can throw something against the wall and it'll stick just as much as the shit been thrown from what's been in school. Taught in school. Excuse that language. Challenges produce mainly produce major challenges for existing theories of how the first Americans began to arrive in North America. James Advazio. Advazio. It all started one day, 1955, when Albert Miller, a former conservationist um, and amateur historian, was was out. <laughs> I was I was hiking on his property, but I, that that out while passing a steep cliffs. Hey, I can read a little bit. Just to get there, I can read a little bit about it. You know what I'm saying? I read better than some people. While passing the steep cliffside area uh, with a distinctive rock overhang that yielded a natural occurring shelter, he noticed the groundhouse slip down a hole. Uh, upon closer inspection, Miller found bones near the entrance of the hole. More than likely, the groundhog had dug up the bones and deposited them there. Miller wondered, a little bit of so, for almost 20 years, discovery remained closely regarded secret. When Miller encountered someone, he talked to us whether we might be able to make it to the right archaeology to the person to into his confidence. One such person was Phil Jack, a historian of colonial uh, America at the State College of California, Pennsylvania. Okay, yeah, this thing is pretty extensive. Extensive. Uh, the crew chief of the Marine of the Genius Trials, you know, wow, wow. climbing strategic expert general was another character in the lineup. Some who I know they was talking about how, uh, you know, some of the Dayton and uh, some of the let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. I mean, the same picture for the other, but the main point is, yo, yo, it's before, it's people before y'all, man. And you know what I'm saying? And that's up north, y'all, y'all, y'all playing in, this. yeah, yeah, you can come through there, you know what I'm saying? You can have that, uh, damn, what was the wrong thing? All right, so y'all, you can have 
the story. I mean, it, it, it's not all the way true. It's at best a theory. <laughs> It's a, it's a, uh, I don't even know if we make the third stage. According to the scientific method, obviously, nah, nigga, nah. Just by observation, nah. North America, you know what I'm saying? You, you suit, I, all, everybody on reservation, right? Fail the test of observation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all fail the test of so y'all not copper colored. Has has European um the European the colonizer right when they came was it that much influencing going on? With the indigenous tribes. So you gotta you got millions of you know I'm gonna say copper colors of black people. <laughs> copper colors of black people. That's how I got words in my mind. But y'all know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? When you when you got all the, the skin tones and you know what I'm saying? And, and, and according to your story, it, it seems to fit here in this climate better than a light person, a lighter person, lighter tone person. So, you know, just, just by observation, you know what I'm saying? You fail the test. So I know, you know, when you trying to draw back, hey, you know, you, y'all trying to take somebody else's uh, line like, but yeah, you're on the reservation, so enjoy that. You know what I'm saying? We just came from Ireland. You know, it, it was more than one type of tribes here. I'm not saying y'all don't deserve any y'all plains Indian stuff, but down here in the southeast, down here in the south, we we, we you know what I'm saying? We're trying to we're trying to make something happen. I'm quite sure the world is, but. You know, we know we we the real copper colors now in this way, but you go to at more Alabama, you see this. A little brief history of this style of dance. So uh, let me see if I can uh I was he right there at the beginning? No, he wasn't talking anymore. He's on my uh wireless mic. I thought he was right there beside me. That's what's on the record. Got the mic going way over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? That look like that, you know. It is what it is because it's reality. They're there. Like, you know what I'm saying? You ask how they get there. You got to have a story for that. But I'm saying is we been here man and when we all this mixing going on yeah you get you get you know what i'm saying it can get confusing especially those in the south you know because most of y'all grandmamas great grandmama they from the south somewhere they from the south. I hear all the bills going on in the community. You know what I'm saying? I hear it, you know? And I even hear it from a Pan-African. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they'll tell them that they got in the end. So, you know, um, that's the gist of this particular bill, man. I just wanted to, uh, you know, show the fact that it's always information to kind of like, you know, stir up some stuff, man, and just make everything complicated. Um, this information is intended for those who can receive it. You know, if it ain't meant for you, you know what I'm saying? If you're like a Native American or something, you know, you, you need to go fight the archeologists that discovered that you were not first. 
You know what I'm saying? Because all we doing, we going by what y'all go by. Yeah, I got archaeologists. We got archaeologists too. Archaeolo archaeological sources. And so, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is, though. I'm on a building chip, man. I don't, I don't, as long as it's um, it'll benefit our people. See, I'm, 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 I'm ready to build well, whoever, but you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, if we're speaking the information, we're going to talk about that, then we need to make sure we have some things straight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't have reservations, but how, let's say, how can you build, how can uh, blacks, and natives build. If if there's no now we can prove there've been connections. You can see my build like uh I got one source. Let me go to it right quick. So we going we're gonna make sense of what I'm talking about. We're gonna uh stop trying my bad. Oh there we go right here. That's straight. Boom. All right, so let me go to my YouTube right quick. That's Admiral Alabama Reservation, Porch Creek Indians. That's why I'm getting that. Okay. Let's go around. Shout out, Bam. Okay, I gave, see, got some genealogy going on when I first jumped in. You know what I'm saying? That's why I was doing. I was trying to figure it, you know what I'm saying? Find out, like, woo, 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 woo. You know, it's been updated since then. So <laughs> don't go, you know what I'm saying? Trying to make it, it's up there, but it's it's been updated. Uh, this right here, the African American, Native American bibliography. Okay, you saw this drop in here, drip, drop, drip, 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 drop. You know what I'm saying? Like relations, relations with Indian. Y'all see that? Y'all see that relations? It's been a thing. You know what I'm saying? Let's get back to that. If it's gonna be anything, you know what I'm saying? But when we, who cares who be in here first or whatever? Whatever. But well, we're gonna set this record straight though, and we're gonna talk that talk. And this is the reason why. But you know, at the end of the day, outside of the information, I mm, sound like a like a holy note, like a sacred. Say it with me now. You know what I'm saying? Like Aristotle and the American Indians. The red over black, black slavery among the Cherokee Indians. I mean, they do have slaves, Choctaws have slaves. So you gotta deal with that. Right? Black Indians are heritage. Uh William Lorenz uh Lorenz Cats. I got that book on I got that book right here. Oh man, I'm gonna create another. I got that book on my channel. William Lubin's Cats, where you at? No, I got that right here. Proudly red and black. Look at that. First thing pop up, <laughs> LL Cool J. We talking about the black Indians, you know what I'm talking about? Cause we, we are, we knew. So I got the whole book. Mm-hmm. We see, I see them. The Seminole Negro Indian Scouts. You know what I'm saying? You need to get back to it. That's one up. Mm-hmm. 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 And I heard my little kids, I heard my little boy, my, my oldest boy, he in, he in school, he just got to drop him off. 
you know. Uh, but yeah, man, that look. Take what you can from it. You know, make sure you're doing your genealogy. You know, this is no hate at all. It could be looked. It could be looked at as tough love. You know what I'm saying? But no hate. No hate over here. I'm. You know, I'm willing to build with everybody. And you know. And that's how I'm gonna leave it, man. You, you know, when I when I visit other people's panels. You know, I want, obviously you, you you're dropping information, you know, or some news that might I might can uh, add to my you know what I'm saying benefit my my daily routine, whether it's researching or you know what I'm saying what I got to go what I got going on at the house, you know, but. Yeah, man, it don't matter. It don't matter who came first or whatever, whatever, which family. I mean, find out who your family are. You know what I'm saying? And and in their, their place in his story. So, you know, uh, and and really, you ain't got to compare it to his story. You could just tell your story, and everybody would respect that, or everybody should just respect that. You know, because everybody's story is different. We're going to keep it like that, man. Uh, you know, make sure you do your genealogy. Find out who your people are. Brother Lawrence 228, we got this thing, man. Peace.